I'm committed to changes in election and political party financing in Ontario. I believe it's important that these changes be in place or significantly underway before the June 2018 election with initial changes legislated for January 1st, 2017. I believe in leadership by example and that's why I've already made the decision to cancel upcoming private fundraisers that I or ministers attend. Uh, it's very important to me that we get this right. Well, that's Ontario Premier Kathleen Wynne putting out one of the many fires she's dealing with right now. This is a woman who is in trouble in more ways than one. Ray Hurd joins me now from Toronto. And Ray, last week you referred to Kathleen Wynne as dead premier walking your prediction last week is is looking even more true this week. Let's start with fundraising before we go into autism and problems with overcrowded provincial jails. Uh, fundraising, she's come out with a new proposal, but the opposition parties go, wait a minute, you're not even consulting with us. You're not consulting with the people. You're making it up on your own to benefit yourself. Well, that's true. I would say uh, when we last spoke, she was dead premier walking. Now she's dead premier diving into her own grave that she dug for herself. This proposal she has on funding political parties has a lot of faults. We'll get into that. But again, it's only when the media, notably the Toronto Star, caught her out giving ministers allocations of how much money they had to raise up to half a million dollars each. And, um, and much of it, much of it from the, the people in the industries that they regulate. <laughs> yes, especially the finance minister, Charles Sousa, who worked on Royal Bank with me once. These people were given allocations or quotas to fill, often from the people they regulate, which is a conflict of interest, of course. And then when she was caught, she backed off and she said she went home to her kitchen table somewhere probably in Rexdale or suburbia, wherever she lives. I say that because I live in Rosedale in a hovel. But she did it and she went home and she drafted the new regulations or proposed regulations at her kitchen table and brought them in. And instead of doing what the opposition wanted to do, Brian, which is to have an inquiry into this whole matter, to call witnesses and to see they're doing the right thing. She's trying to impose it without a public inquiry. And that is outrageous, but that's what we expect of Kathleen Wynne. There, there's an arrogance about this woman, isn't there? A real arrogance. But there's another element to it that's equally important. What she wants to do is to have you and me and all the Ontario taxpayers bail out the parties by giving a certain amount of money annually, I think, or quarterly, to the parties from the public treasury. So that would give them an allocation from the taxpayers. And as obviously, you, everyone's guessed this, guess which party gets the most money in the system? Oh, would that be the Liberals, Ray? That's the Liberals. And also, the Green Party may get probably don't win any votes, but I guess if they get a certain number of votes, they'll get a handout. Now, Stephen Harper, the federal system that Gretchen introduced after Gretchen banned unions and corporations from giving money and limited the amount individuals can give, which, by the way, has a tax write-off. We often forget that, up to 50%, I think. No, up so, to 75. Well, Gretchen then introduced a subsidy from the government. Now, some people may not want to vote for anyone. Nonetheless, their taxes go to the political parties. That's one problem with it. And Stephen Harper, to his credit, abolished that system. And he said, and he ruled, and this is the federal regulation now, the parties don't get any handouts from the taxpayers. If well, you want to give, you donate. My my big problem with the per vote subsidy, whether it was at the federal level or what's coming here, and as soon as I heard Wynn say we need to transition away to a new system, I said she's going to bring in a per vote subsidy, and now she's she's promising that, is that the money goes to the parties. It doesn't go to candidates. And so you can have someone who decides, all right, I ran as a liberal or I ran as a conservative the last time, but the party's changed and I want to represent my constituents. Well, they're not going to get the money. The money goes to the parties because the parties run 
the system. That's a big reason that this has to change. Ray, I want to ask you about two more issues uh, before we go, because these are issues that are dogging the Premier. We saw uh, mothers protesting in the gallery at Queen's Park, yelling at the Premier over the issue of autism funding. This is something that the Liberals campaigned on in 2003 when they took power from the Conservatives uh, 13 years ago. They promised proper funding for autism treatment. They've never delivered on it. Now they're even scaling back what was there now. Uh, is this going to be a big issue for them? Yes, this is huge. Public sympathy is for them. In Toronto, this is a big, a big issue on TV and talk radio, more than in the media. It is absolutely disgusting, Brian, to punish children and their parents. Until now, uh, the thing, well, she wants to stop it at age five. Now, the waiting list, Brian, can be over two years for the parents. So five is obviously too young. There should be no limit. It should go until hopefully they go to a special school and in their late teens they may be qualified to get a job somewhere. But until then, we have to help them because that's the right humane thing to do. And sometimes I think Kathleen Wynne is not only politically corrupt, but she's inhumane. She doesn't really care about these issues. Well, she cared about this... them enough to campaign and get votes and get good press and sympathy, but, but not enough to actually help. Uh, let me ask you about a, a group of people that would usually generate less sympathy, and I'm talking about prisoners. Here in Ottawa in particular, there's trouble at the Ottawa Carleton Detention Center. Now, this is the remand jail. Uh, it's a provincially run facility. Uh, most of the people in there have not actually been convicted of a crime yet. They're awaiting trial. And yet, conditions, there's been reports of bad conditions. I, I don't cry over people saying, oh, the food's bad in jail, then don't go to jail. But it's so overcrowded, they've had inmates sleeping in showers, Ray. One man died, it turns out, of natural causes while sleeping in the uh, a shower cell. Uh, another man killed himself this week. We've had a supervisor fired and, uh, and and people waiting up to three years just to get their trial on, on underway. The premier asked about it. She said, oh, yes, this is egregious. This is horrible. We have to make sure the resources are there. She was speaking, Ray, as if she'd never been in power, hadn't been part of cabinet for the last decade and a bit, hadn't been premier for the last three years. She She can't even acknowledge that this is her problem. Well, there are two issues here. The most important issues, and again, I have to use the word, it's disgusting. If people have not been convicted of a crime yet, or freed of a crime or charge, they should be treated with respect. They've done nothing wrong yet, and they may never have done anything wrong. So I think that there's an obligation to treat them differently from the way you treat people who are convicted of crimes. But even those who are convicted should have the right to be rehabilitated to become useful members of society when they've served their time. So I think penal reform is something we sweep under the rug. Most people don't want to discuss it, but it's a serious issue, and actually it's a much more serious issue in the United States and other countries well, where even more people go to jail percentage wise. But in Canada, Justin Trudeau claims to be decent and humane and caring. Kathleen Wynne, who in some respects has become the co prime minister of Canada, she's so close to Justin, she should address these issues of social justice. But th this is a provincial prison. This is Kathleen Wynne's responsibility yes. presented with a problem. She just says, oh, yes, we have to make sure resources are there. Well, that's her job. She's been premier for, what, three years now? Yes. So I, and, it, it's um, up to her. It, she can't just pass the buck. And, of course, Dalton McGinty lives in Ottawa, I think. Mm -hmm. And Dalton, as a caring citizen, should maybe pick up the phone and tell her to do something about these problems. He is the former premier. And you might have noticed that... Uh, John Cretchen, whom I kind of admire belatedly now, I work for John Turner and Cretchen stand in the back, but Cretchen has addressed issues. He even said 
that this reserve up in north um, west Ontario, east Ontario, should be shut down because the people can't live there. Can you imagine Justin or Dalton McGinty saying a thing like no, that? No, no, definitely has the not. guts to tell it like it is, Brian. Well, uh, Ray, we've got our fire wind billboard up outside of Kathleen Wynne's office. We'll keep it there because we think he, uh, she deserves to go, even if Elections Ontario is going to send us uh, letters to try and intimidate us for doing political advertising. So, if you agree with, if you agree with Ray Hurd. Uh, that she's dead premier walking, that she's corrupt. Go and sign that petition, firewin.ca. Uh, Ray, quick answer. Do you expect her to last her full term or is Wynn going to face so many problems she leaves office like McGinty did? I think that the voters of Ontario are too forgiving. The voters of Alberta and Quebec get tough and throw politically corrupt premiers out. She will survive. And even if she does survive to the end, which I think is likely, I think the tolerant Ontario voters will probably re-elect her. Oh, they don't uh, care about corruption. Now you're giving me nightmares, Ray. I got to cut it off there. Thanks for the time. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.